So, hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. You know, from time to time, I ask you to do a little research and come up with some crook, stupid crook related stories. I think I got a couple you're going to like here. All right, well, we'll do Corvette Ronnie's Crime Beat now. Seventy-four-year-old woman fights back in parking lot robbery. Uh, the seventy-four, excuse me, seventy-four-year-old woman, the Good Samaritans from a robbery and beating, in a midfield store parking lot, said she thought her life was about to end. Sure, I can believe that. Yeah, parking lot. Yeah. I just knew that it was for me, said Brenda Stinson. I just thought I wasn't going to be here no more. But the feisty Birmingham woman said she wasn't going without a fight. I grabbed him between his legs. I grabbed him good between his legs. Uh, that's always been my plan because that's a man's weak spot. His junk. Yeah, his junk. It, that's my weak spot. So mm -hmm. You grab me between legs, I'm going to comply pretty Are you much. asking me or telling me? <laughs> well, not today. Okay. Uh, that's, that's his weak spot. But I didn't know it was going to come true. I know he's going to be sore. <laughs> that is without saying. Uh, the incident happened Wednesday morning at the shopping center on Phillips Drive. Stinson said she had bought her groceries at Piggly Wiggly. Well, that seems apropos. Oh, I wish we had Piggly Wiggly here. I don't know what it is, but I want to go there. <laughs> and, and then gave her, uh, uh, and then went next door to buy her medicine at the pharmacy. When she got back to her SUV, the suspect seemingly came out of nowhere. That's how it happens, lady. It you got to really be watching. Does. Got a head's got to be on a swivel yep. all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I got ready to come to my car and open the door, and that's when he grabbed me. He grabbed me so quick, she said, we got to tussling. Oh, tussling. And he was trying to get my money, but I was holding on to it uh, with in my pocket. Uh -huh. So, and I that's a great plan, actually. If you can ball up your hand and stick your hand in your pocket, that's a double line of the defense right there. Uh, that's a tip from Corvette Run. There you go. Uh, Stinson said she never carries a purse. Instead, she keeps her cash in a brown bag tucked in her pocket. Uh, she believes the suspect had followed her and watched her in Piggly Wiggly because he knew exactly where to look for the money. Well, sure. Uh, we tussled for four or five minutes. Probably wasn't that long. It seems like that long when you're tussling. Yeah. Uh, before I'm not a big fan of the tussle. <laughs> tussling is sometimes required, though. Uh, nobody saw us. We tussled for five minutes before anybody came. He threw me to the ground and threw my money on the seat in the car. This uh, lady, I'm telling you, she's, she's perfect. Oh, I love her. I love her already. Uh, it was when she landed on the pavement, the passersby saw what was happening. It just hurt my heart to see that, said witness Kimberly Whitehead. That's when folks started running towards me. Uh, this man came and grabbed him, and they took him and throwed him to the ground. They done throwed him? Yep, they throwed him to Was the ground. Was they fixing to throw him? <laughs> I think they just, they did it. Oh. I think they just threw him to the ground. They were no fixing the involved. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the man who thwarted the crime is War William Daniels. He said he didn't have time to think or get mad about what he saw. Uh, who would sit back and watch a criminal beat up a lady like that? He exactly. Said. Simpson said her attacker kept yelling that he had AIDS. Well, that's pleasant. Uh, he was lying, she said, hopefully. Uh, he thought that man would let her go if she, if uh, he said she had AIDS. Oh, if he said he had AIDS. I get it. Uh -huh. So he's trying to tell people because, you know, people are kind of, they lose their touchy feeliness when you tell them they have AIDS. And so he had a plan. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, so needless to say, long story short, he was caught. He's sitting in jail. He's awaiting trial. Well, uh, that's a felony to commit um, tussling. Oh yeah, yeah, that's grand. That's grand tussling right there. Grand tussling, you yeah, say? That's a felony. They probably throwed the book at him. <laughs> <laughs> Next story on Corvette Ronnie's Crime Beat today: A Florida couple. This is great. And I always talk about this. Hello, people of Florida. We love you for watching, but a lot of the people that live in your state are really strange. A Florida couple was arrested last week after they were caught allegedly selling drugs. That's not too... No, you know, that's nothing small. unusual about that. Uh, out of a drive through window they constructed out of the side of their mobile home. 
a mobile home. <laughs> Gee, I never would have guessed that. The line was longer than Starbucks. <laughs> uh, no, I, what's, what is that I drive by all the time? Uh, Dutch, Dutch Brothers, Brothers when yeah. I come to your house. Yeah, <laughs> You should have seen the line today, Ronnie. William Parrish Jr. and Mackenzie Dobbs of Ocala, Florida, were arrested on August 23rd after investigators raided their mobile home following reports of four drug overdoses in the area. A call of police said the couple had turned a kitchen window. Can I take your order, please? Yep. Uh, into a drive through so customers would not have to constantly enter and exit their home. Well, that's thoughtful. Yeah, we'll see. If you have a lot of people entering and exiting your home, that makes people think you're selling drugs. Right. But if you just have a drive through window... You could be selling anything. Anything. Yeah. Anything. Uh, drugs, stolen merchandise, anything. Potentially drawing unwanted attention. The house had signs directing people where to drive... <laughs> You know, it never ceases to amaze me that these people put so much effort into this, but they can't hold down a regular job. Yeah. If they just applied themselves, I mean, come on. Well, they all went out of work when Blockbuster went out. That's I, I blame Blockbuster's failure on a lot of uh, I think you may be druggies. spot yeah. on there, Ronnie. Yeah. We were seeing some overdose incidents that were happening in this particular area, specifically at this particular location, a captain said. There were some heroin sales that were going on there. Subsequently, though, the investi through the investigation, we were able to determine that the product was laced with fentanyl. Ooh, that ew. is killing people yeah. uh, at epidemic proportions, Ron. Yeah, that's awful stuff. Parrish 32 was charged with driving under the influence, keeping a dwelling used to sell drugs, possession of drugs with intent to sell tussling and resisting arrest <laughs> without violence. Uh, he is now charged with keeping a dwelling used to sell drugs, possession of drugs, possession of fentanyl, and possession of fentanyl with intent to sell. Uh, he's trying to get himself straightened out, and uh, good that's, luck. That's from his dad. His dad said he's trying to straighten out, um, and that uh, the reports of the uh, overdoses were a lie. Oh, so he that's, says. that's what dad says. Mm, I don't think so. Because, yeah, dad. Yeah, I mean, hey, I get sticking up for your son. I mean, you know, but... Do you have any uh, stories like this, Ronnie, similar to this uh, from your experience? You know what? We did have... We had a walk-up window. In, when I worked uh, Citrus Heights PD, there was a, drug, a house that we knew was a drug house. And the narcotics agent sat across the street and down a little bit. And there was a bedroom window and they would... Knock on the window, special knock or something. Window would slide open about six inches. Hands would exchange merchandise. Window would close, and off they go. You put up the gone fishing sign. <laughs> yep. So, uh, and then the funny thing was, so when I was in training, I did my patrol training here. We just drove up to the front of the house, and we blipped our siren, and people bailed out of every window and like every door I bet. in 18 different directions. Yep. And he goes, I forget what they called the place. They called it the mansion or something like that. And it was it was like infested with cockroaches. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen. If only they could have played the music from Benny Hill at the same time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, that would have been just the perfect. Yeah. yeah. So, All right, let's wrap up Corvette Ronnie's Crime Beat. Okay, Ronnie, so uh, if people would like to send you directly their stupid criminal stories... I'd love to hear them. Give them your email address, uh, Ronnie. Ronnie at mannersosmart.com. Yeah, and uh, below our video here, thank you for watching. Below you'll find all of the ways that you can get in contact with us for whatever reason you might have. Uh, our social media is listed there, our emails, our blogs, uh, etc. Also... The advertisers that make this show possible, our sponsors, our partners, if you will, support them when you are in need of their goods or services, call them and mention Men Are So Smart. Watch what happens. Yeah. Yeah. A little discount coming. All right. Uh, until, oh, subscribe to our channel, please. Yeah. I forgot to mention. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got to do that. Yeah. 
uh, we would appreciate that greatly. And when you do, you'll get notifications as to when our show comes out new, which will be Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Also, be sure and check our website because any day now, we should have a link there where you can buy Men Are So Smart merchandise. I think first up for the fall and for Christmas shopping time will be our hoodies, Ronnie. Ooh, nice. Uh, and here's a picture of one of those hoodies right now. You could own one of these, but you got to keep watching to find out how. Limited edition. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And we'll see you on the next Men Are So Smart. Bye-bye.